It's your favorite history teacher, Mr. Parker Ainsworth, here with our intern, Chris, for the weekly midterm of FN Sports. Chris, how you doing? Hey, Parker, I've been feeling a little sick the past couple of days, but with the news today of the MLB lockout now canceling games, I'm more frustrated and mad than I am <laughs> sick right now. I could care less about my illness. I want <laughs> baseball to start, but it's not going to on time now, officially. And is that, I mean, obviously you're a big Red Sox fan. Is that because you're like, have high hopes for Red Sox this year? Or is it just more general frustrations? Like, ah, no more baseball. It's mainly because like baseball is probably the first sport that I fell in love with and still one of my favorite sports to this day. So to actually see this play out in real time, like I don't really remember much of the NBA lockout and what was it, 2011, correct? Mm -hmm. I don't really, granted I was like, 13 around then but I, I wasn't really paying much attention to the NBA then so I didn't really like notice that was going on but now to see it in a sport that like I put a bunch of attention and care into and see this happening in real time it's it's frustrating for sure well aside from the fact that you just made me feel really old because I was in college <laughs> when the 2011 lockout happened in the NBA I will say that that lockout was interesting because it was like the start of social media so you saw like Durant posting videos of pickup games at like Rucker Park and stuff. And then you also saw like Instagram posts of dudes on vacation. Like they were both (laughs) in the spectrum when they got started late that year. The big, not to sit too much on, because we need to talk about some picks and stuff like that. I thought it was interesting. The kinds of things they were disagreeing on a a tweet I fired off because I thought it was just ridiculous. It's like, there's like a $50,000 gap between what the two sides want the minimum salary to be and fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money to you or me but i feel like in the in that world 50 grand is not that much money yeah. right it's nothing to the owners but they don't want to cough it up for the players it, it's irritating just crazy and again like i get how 50 grand is a lot to myself i'm a teacher and to most people but like these are literal billionaires i, I just didn't i didn't couldn't believe that that was a sticking point other CBA news today. I I fired off a tweet or two about it because we're recording on a Tuesday. I there was a WNBA story that came out today. Did you see the story? Yeah, about the Liberty. Yeah, the Liberty got a five hundred thousand dollar fine and almost got hit worse because they were using the owner decided to pay for charter flights for everyone, and that was like some like improper benefit, like almost college sports sounding thing. And I was Jesus. like just that's just craziness right like can you imagine if someone told mark cuban he couldn't treat the mavs as well as somebody like it just sounds and it's in the biggest market arguably in the country like that's crazy it's one of the few of the original teams from when the wma started a little over 25 years ago it like it's just a lot of chaos i also saw they might get like the team taken away or something or like I guess that was on the table. I don't know how close that really was. I, in the Sports Illustrated article, it's a really well-written article because it outlines a lot of details, both about ownership and the CBA. But I guess that really was on the table. I I guess it's just interesting because, like, clearly some owners think that this WNBA is worth investing in and, like, they're willing to put their money in. And the NBA, whoa, 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 whoa. And, like, that was just that was just weird to me. This isn't a, an episode where we typically give out gold stars and detentions, but I think that would be one. <laughs> For sure. So we're looking at my bookie and we're coming up on like the thick of March Madness. It's it's the early part of March. And so as we're getting ready for March Madness with my bookie, we're looking across the site to kind of frankly build some revenue before we dive into March Madness betting. I think there's some weird, funky stuff to put your money on on March Ma- uh, on uh, my bookie.com. So, Chris, as we scroll through the site, like what did you see as something interesting? To put your money on i found it hilarious that there's actually a section on my bookie for u.s politics but i i would never actually put my money on that whatsoever one thing i am interested in though is this saturday the fight between uh, colby covington and jorge masvidal i'm not the biggest ufc fighter but this is certainly a fight that i'm going to look forward to and i'm probably leaning towards 
Colby Covington at minus 310 compared to Masvidal at a plus 250? Well, and frankly, it's a fun fight to watch because two guys I kind of like to watch get hit in the face. I, I, mm-hmm. I think that it's interesting. You brought the the we'll talk. We can talk more about the fight in a second. The politics section to kind of make a sports tie here. You can get your odds are at plus 50,000 for Tommy Tuberville to be the Republican candidate in 2024. So, just you know, keep your eye on that. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Maybe you can do great in, in some of the speeches or debates. <laughs> Yeah, just chaos, craziness. Just, yeah, lots of lots of weird stuff happening on there. I, I think it's interesting, and people listening to this after the State of the Union, it would you ever bet on something on the State of the Union? Like, there's a lot of weirdness in betting on the State of the Union. God, no. I don't even remember the last time I've ever watched a State of the Union address, <laughs> so I don't think I would ever put money on it. But, hey, if that's if that's your thing, if you like politics and you like gambling, hey, go throw some money on it. I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to hate you for it or judge you. Oh, the mark of a true college kid. I tell you what, Chris, if I'm ever betting on how many times the president says the word gas or gasoline in the State of the Union – you need to cut the credit card up. Like we're done. <laughs> like that's, that's too much. That's too much. Other thing here, it, they, you can also bet on things like the Academy Awards, Oscars and the Grammys. You mentioned, you know, you watched some of these movies this year. You liked Don't Look Up. Don't Look Up is at plus 330 or 3300 to win Best Picture. It was funny. Do you think it's got a shot to win Best Picture? Or is it, is it just that long of odds? I think if people under like truly understand like the satire and the shots it was taking at American society, that uh, it should it should have a chance to win the award. But also because of that, it probably won't because some people will be turned off by that and hate it. But I thought it was a phenomenal movie, so I think it should have a, a good shot of at least winning. Although, what do you say the odds were? Thirty three hundred. Thirty three hundred. Yeah, uh, three thousand. Yeah, so like that's that's bucks. Not looking great. 100 bucks get you a lot of money. I, I will say, I thought you think the movie had like layers to satire. Like there was the obvious bit, and then there was a second, and there were some jokes that dove down to a third. This is off script a little bit, but have you seen the TV show, or I say TV show, but it's more like a streamable show, Righteous Gemstones? No, I have not. So it, it's a very similar satirical piece with Danny McBride and some of the fun guys there. But anyway, it's the same kind of thing. They look at like like this very like, church atmosphere that's very corrupt and the same kind of like satirical look i will say in a sports tie king richard is at plus 2800 for best actor will smith's at minus 500 so clearly people really value will smith even if they don't necessarily have that movie did you watch king richard at all no i'd not truthfully i'm not the biggest movie person Usually it's just sports is all that I watch and occasionally some shows here and there, but I'm trying to dive more into movies now that it's just college basketball and NBA and NHL at the moment. So I have a bunch of free time now, so I need to start watching some more stuff. Well, and and I will say that I just, I thought that back and forth as compared to there, that last thing is as a teacher, I do feel like my students would point out that in Kanto at minus 450 is still something you probably got to put some money on. Even if it's such a big favorite, it would be hard to win anything relevant. Any other, before we dive into the crux of the show here, any other interesting or oddball funky picks that you see on my bookie? Yeah, not sure why my bookie has any odds up for baseball right now, because it's not, they always said first two series of the season are canceled, probably going to be even longer. So they should just scrap all the MLB odds right now and just get them the hell out of there and then fix, put them new odds up whenever the baseball season actually starts. I don't, th- well, I don't see how you can b- put money on baseball when you don't even know when the first game is going to be. And I know this mostly as an Astros fan paying attention to free agency, they can't officially, I say officially in like air quotes, I guess, because they could be sneakily talking, but they can't officially start free agency even yet. Right. Like mm-hmm. there, there's no, I mean, Correa has been rumored a couple of places. Obviously Houston's fairly interested in bringing him back, but it, it feels like Correa's wherever Correa is playing, if it's in the AL or the AL East or AL West, like that's going to shape the, that, that pennant a lot. Whereas like right now, the Astros are the second favorite on their, on their odds chart at eight, plus eight ten. That feels like it's just because they've had a good half decade. Like, I don't know why, why else would we be in second right now? <laughs> and also, I know I said not to put money on it right now, but 
don't really understand how the Red Sox are home. Let me count it real quick. Two, four, six, eight, <laughs> ten. They're the 11th best odds to win the World Series. Um, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, but they were one of the final two teams or final four teams in baseball this past year. Sorry about that. But how are they one of the top, their, their 11th best odds when they just made the ALCS one? They should have never came close to it last year. They wildly over exceeded and yet somehow they're still 11th I feel like they should be a little higher at plus 1600 too so 100 bucks gets the city of boston 1600 bucks that's pretty Ooh. pretty good odds pretty good odds don't spend <laughs> don't spend all those tips in one place no <laughs> what i will say is that i think that it's just interesting to look at like if you put 100 bucks on the red sox today they are one of the leading candidates to get correa so like you mentioned they were the alcs team a year ago they could bring in a big talent like that in the free agent. And all of a sudden, shortened season, the Red Sox are really good. Like, that seems like easy money almost. should oh, mention yeah. the Dodgers are favorites at plus 550. Of course. Because they're the Dodgers, right? <laughs> That's just the way that goes. Speaking of player movement, since we last looked at odds to win the NBA title, we've had a fairly large trade deadline. And so championships continue on the corner with my bookie. Head to my bookie today when this March. Place your bets whomever you think will take home the crown. Be sure to use code FN Sports W deposit up to a thousand US dollars. My bookie's favorite is Phoenix, and they're a great pick currently. Be sure to put whatever kind of cash you have down on them. My bookie takes all types of well known cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum. So put down some money on the Suns. Phoenix are the favorites at plus 390 W deposit. Use the code FN Sports on my bookie today. But anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. So, Chris, I said the Phoenix Suns are the favorite at plus 390, and you very quickly are like, that seems confusing to me. What's got you shaking up there? I Because I, I knew that Chris Paul was out for the rest of the regular season. I didn't realize that he's probably going to come back for the playoffs. So that makes sense that he, they're still up there in the favorites. But I feel like that should at least maybe knock them down a little bit because you never know how he's going to come back from his injury. He might not be the same he was pre-injury. So I just thought that was a little bit confusing. I still think the Warriors, though, same odds, plus 390. I think the Warriors might just run through everyone in the West and make it to another finals and start another dynasty again. I I feel like it's inevitable. <laughs> it's inevitable. And they're going to pass the torch from Curry. And then in his old age, he'll just be a spot up shooter and it'll be Kaminga and it'll be like, oh, we keep going. I, I do think it's interesting. First of all, I got to ask as an Eastern Conference guy yourself, two cities very close to Boston, but Boston does not like either one of them very much in New York and Philadelphia, big moves being made between the Nets and the Sixers. You had Ben Simmons go from the Sixers, Ben Simmons and Seth Curry and Andre Drummond, I guess, all from the Sixers going to the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets send back James Harden. That's swapping two all-stars. One of them was a former MVP. That's a fairly big trade. Before mm-hmm. I start breaking down the odds here, who did you feel like as a fan won that trade? Or did you were you paying as a Celtics guy? Were you scared of either team more but them more after the trade than you were before? Oh, the Sixers definitely won that trade by a mile. It's not even close. I mean, they basically traded James Harden for Seth Curry and a couple others because Ben Simmons hasn't touched the floor all year long, and they're still unsure when he's going to come back. But I think the Sixers won that trade by a a long shot obviously there's still uncertainty with Kyrie and his situation although New York City seems to be lifting their vaccine mandate although he still might not be able to play don't really know about that but yeah Sixers and my eyes definitely won the trade that at least now they finally have someone that can obviously Ben Simmons was still a phenomenal passer but James Harden is also a great passer and he can do much more on the offensive end than Simmons can and that's going to take a lot of stress off of Embiid so I it no doubt in my mind that the Sixers won the trade and they're probably going to be one of the top teams in the East, like one or two, and probably be in the conference finals when it comes to playoffs. I think my, my read on it too, is I feel like Sixers won the trade in the sense that like, I feel like Philadelphia got better and like raised their ceiling. I still feel like Brooklyn's ceiling is like, as far as Durant is healthy enough to take them. Right. Like that, Mm -hmm. that still feels like the inhibiting factor there. I don't know. Like, if Durant can't play, Kyrie can play half the games, and it's Ben Simmons. I don't, I don't know if I trust them any more than I did before. What I will say is, we both think Philadelphia won the trade. After the trade deadline, the odds, my bookie's got Brooklyn at plus five thirty and Philly at plus six twenty. And 
I don't, do you understand that? Why is the, why are the odds better for Brooklyn right now? Is there something I'm missing there? The only thing that makes sense to me is that if all the stars on both teams are healthy, Brooklyn obviously has the best player in Kevin Durant. But I mean, you could probably argue that out of Durant, Kyrie, Simmons, Embiid, and Harden, that you could argue that Harden and Embiid are two and three on that list out of those five. So maybe it's just because when healthy, Katie is the best player out of them. So that's why the Nets have the higher odds. But yeah, you're right. It's still pretty confusing as to how the Nets have better odds than the Sixers to me. Yeah. And I, I guess I, you're right about if Durant is healthy, he's the best of the five. I, I just see, like you're saying, they have two and three and I don't know that Durant is healthy. <laughs> so I, yeah. I, I guess that that's my, my question mark there. You're, let's, can we talk about your Celtics for a minute before we wrap this up? Celtics had like a great January, February. And then like the last week of February was rough. Yeah, they're, they're just have back to back losses. <laughs> they're seeing at plus eighteen hundred. Do you see? Is that like a peaking too early moment? Are you worried at all? Or is plus eighteen hundred kind of a good spot to go throw a hundred bucks down and win a couple grand? I think it's a pretty reasonable spot. I'm not panicking yet. If the first couple months of the season were happening right now, like towards the later end of the season, then I'd really be nervous. But I think they'll be able to start to figure it out. Come down coming down to the last few games of the season. I do remember last time I was on here, I and when we were doing an episode like this, I mentioned how the Celtics were the hottest team in basketball because they had just won nine games in a row. They proceeded to lose that night after we recorded. <laughs> so clearly I have no idea what I'm talking about ever. So <laughs> well, even nine out of 10 is not bad. Uh, I, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's interesting. My, my sneak pick last time, before the trade deadline, I said I would have said Cleveland. Cleveland slid a little bit in the standings. And I will say, I kind of hope they made some like push for getting them over the hump pick or some sort of a push over the hump trade at the deadline. And they kind of did that with swapping out Rubio and bringing back Karis LeVert. They kind of do that in swapping Ricky Rubio for Karis LeVert. I will say that like while that adds something to them, they don't look to be as like dynamic as they were before, or like they, they seem to be running out of steam a little bit. I think the sneak pick here, and I'll just go ahead and say it and, and cut to the chase is going to be LA Clippers. Uh, the Clippers will be adding Paul George back soon and potentially Kawhi Leonard. It doesn't look like Kawhi, but like theoretically, if like they got to April and Kawhi was like, I think I'm okay. All of a sudden that team's really good again. And that oh, yeah. plus 7,000, if you're a, a gambler and got the scratch, it's not like there are crazier things to put money on. Cause they're playing really still, well without them, frankly. I still wouldn't count out the Memphis Grizzlies right now. They're still playing pretty good, especially after John Morant. What was it last night? The deep three, the crazy buzzer beater, the posterizing dunk. Like this kid just has everything apparently. And so I think he might be able to carry them at least, at least to the conference finals, maybe to the finals, but I mean, what was the odds again? Plus twenty three hundred. Yeah, that's not that's not bad odds. I think he might have a chance to pull it out somehow. Well, and it's interesting because at plus twenty three hundred, it's like you're saying, like it is a long shot, and I feel like they're not that big a long shot. They just have to probably beat the Warriors and the Suns, right? Like, like mm-hmm. that's tough. Winning eight games out of those fourteen games would be tough, but I. John Morant's having that kind of year. Chris, tell people where can they find you to lament more about baseball being delayed or to bet on things like MMA this weekend or just to lament about the State of the Union that you're not watching? (laughs) So Yeah, if you want to see me depressingly tweet about baseball being locked out for the foreseeable future, you can follow that at Chris underscore Slewa7. I will be doing a bunch of that now. I'm probably going to be watching a bunch of college baseball now since that's the only kind of baseball I can watch. <laughs> so, but yeah, at Chris underscore Slewa7, I'm going to be doing a, having a lot of depressing tweets with baseball being locked out soon because that's my favorite sport. And now the fact that it's gone, it sucks. But I mean, March Madness, the greatest month of sport of the sports year is around the corner. So at least that's something to cheer me up. <laughs> and next week, I think we'll have a lot more to talk about March Madness as we're diving deeper into the conference tournaments this time a week from now. 
Uh, you can find me where I'm lamenting the Astros, but not a lot of other baseball things. But I'm talking a lot about other – I'm always anti-billionaire, so I'm happy to talk about the lockout with you if you want. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Painsworth512. It's at P-A-I-N-S-W-R-T-H-512 on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, this show is on – Twitter and Instagram on Instagram. We're at F underscore in underscore sports. It's F underscore in underscore sports. And on Twitter, we're at F in sports two F N S P O R T S number two, all one word. Here's one of those. You can use the link tree in the bio to get to all of our sponsors. My bookie, obviously you can use code F in sports, W to pause up to a thousand dollars beard struggle, which in which you can go to use F in sports 15 and use, get 15% off of your beard needs and supplies. Obviously, you can use our link there to go to Yeti and help out the show, support the show using just using the link there to get to all the cups, coolers, and koozies. And as always, that link tree will also take you to our merch store. This March for Women's History Month, we have a orange with white writing silhouette of the FN Sports hoodie and t-shirt. Make sure you grab one of those for helping support Planned Parenthood of Greater Texas because Texas needs it these days. And with that, make sure you like, subscribe, download, rate, review, do all the wonderful things to help the podcast. Listen to it on a couple different platforms. And whatever you do when it comes to sports, don't flunk with us. Later, guys. Time to take this submarine back up. Oh, but it's tax season up there, Captain. You know, all that stressing over taxes isn't necessary with Tax Act. How did you get... April here. To remind you that with Tax Act, you're guaranteed your maximum refund while filing for less. Beats being submerged for another month. May, hey, Captain? To your stations. We're headed home. Guess I should probably close that window I opened. What? Kidding. Tax Act. Switch to Tax Act today and start for free. See TaxAct.com for details. Enjoy basketball, soccer, and all your favorite sports like never before at BetMGM. Sign up using bonus code CHAMPION and your first wager is risk-free up to $1,000. Plus, when you register with BetMGM, you'll get instant access to a variety of parlay selection features, live betting options, player props, and daily boosted odds specials. Download the BetMGM app today or go to BetMGM.com and enter bonus code CHAMPION and place your first wager risk-free up to $1,000. Now you're winning with the king of sports books. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. 21 years of age or older to wager. Washington, D.C. and Virginia only. New customer offer. All promotions are subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued as non-withdrawable free bets or site credit. Free bets expire seven days from issuance. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700.